If you'd like your own personal private coach at incredibly affordable prices, please send me an email above and the consultation is free. One of the beautiful things about coaching is this is all I do. This is what I live, breathe, drink, sleep, my full-time job. And I'm able to study the resources and books and lecturers and things like that and apply it in coaching. And over the years, I've seen what works and what doesn't work. And I see the common mistakes that people make in their productivity and their success in accomplishing the things that they want out of life. One of the biggest things, one of the biggest mistakes people make when they try to do their goals is they don't simplify their goal. They make things too complex. And perfectionism is primarily responsible for that. When you have perfectionism, perfectionism is like driving with a Ferrari with the brake on, the emergency brake on. You might get somewhere here and there, but you don't achieve consistency over time because the standards are unrealistically high. You grow habits. You grow success. It's not something that you can say on December 31st, starting tomorrow, I'm going to eat right, I'm going to sleep right, I'm going to the gym, I'm going to be productive in my job or school, I'm going to make more money. That's not the way habits work. It's doomed for failure. And even worse than that is each time that you do do that and you don't accomplish it, you are defeating your word to yourself. You're not completing, you're not honoring your word to yourself, and then your word starts to mean nothing. And with the clients that I coach is that's the one thing we start with is rehabilitating your word. When you say you're going to do something, by, by golly, you do it. By golly. That's it. Your word is your bond. Treat your word with such care and preciousness that it's not something that you want to violate to others nor to yourself because that is your investment, that's your cash, that's your capital, is your word. And it starts to feel so good when you keep your word to yourself and to others and you start with small things. Even something as simple as being punctual, being on time, you start to feel good. When you say you're going to be somewhere, you show up on time. You don't show up with excuses and there was traffic and I was running late and something came up. You gave your word and you honor it. And that's what increases your self-discipline. One of the things that we set up, we set up your own personal goals in a, in a coaching session. And one of the most common mistakes people make is they set the goal too unrealistically high. So if someone, for example, has a weight loss goal and they say, okay, I wanted, their goals are I want to work out at the gym for uh, an hour and a half, five days a week, and I want to eat only fruits and vegetables and no more fast food and no more sugar and no processed food and things like that. That's what they start with. And without realizing is that you're, fail, you're setting yourself up for failure before you've even begun. And we have to dial it back and keep the goal really simple. And my mantra is baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. With baby steps, you can, it's a, you'll be amazed what you can accomplish. You can accomplish just about anything by going incrementally. And it's like a seedling, a goal or a habit. It's like a seedling. And you plant this little seedling, allow it to grow roots. You water it. You put sunlight on it, you fertilize it, and you give it time to do its thing. What we want to do is we want to control and rush it. No, it's not, it's not fast enough. So I have people that, if they have a weight loss goal, they'll, they'll say all these uh, unrealistic things, an hour and a half at the gym. And I'll say, well, how about we start with 15 minutes at the gym? That's it, 15 minutes at the gym. That is going to be your goal. And how about we start with eating a piece of fruit? for breakfast, before your breakfast, that's all it is. Eat a piece of fruit and 15 minutes at the gym, three or four days a week. Well, what? That's not gonna get me anywhere. I'm not gonna lose weight with that. 
That's too easy. I don't want to do that. It seems like a waste of time. And then I say, well, how much have you been doing previously? What have you been doing previously? Well, I haven't been going to the gym. Well, I haven't really been eating that healthy. So this is a start. This is that little seedling that we're going to plant. We're going to water. We're going to fertilize. I'm going to teach you the techniques, give you the tools on how to achieve this goal, and most importantly, hold you accountable. That's the one thing people miss in goals is they try to do everything themselves. And that social accountability makes a huge difference. And keep it light, easy, and simple. And then you go to the gym for 15 minutes and you force yourself to leave after 15 minutes. Because why? You want to come back to the gym the next week or the next day hungry. You want to come back to the gym with the desire to to work out and feel good about it because you kept the goal easy, manageable, and successful. It's like one of my clients before she contacted me, or actually it was, it was, we set the goal for 15, I think we set the goal for 20 minutes for the gym and she ended up doing an hour and a half and she was sore and tired and kind of just beat herself up at the gym. And why? I asked her, why would you do that to yourself? That's not what we we talked about. We talked about 15 minutes, keeping it simple, keeping it nice, and keeping it uh, achievable. Very, very easy. And a lot of people, we've got to just, I know this is contrary to the way we've been conditioned. We've been conditioned, set your goals high, reach for the stars, do as much as you can. That's the way we've been conditioned. And a lot of people, I just have to pull them back, give them a reality check, and think about the long term. What people miss out on is one word that makes all the difference, and that's patience. We want that immediate gratification, immediate results, and then get frustrated and quit when we don't achieve it. Give yourself patience. Give yourself time. Give yourself Simple, easy, achievable goals. The more complex you make something, the more that resistance builds. The more you procrastinate, the more you don't want to do it. For example, for exercising, with um, my, some of my clients that are not used to an exercise routine, we'll start with a five-minute walk in the morning. That's it. Just start with the five-minute walk. You can't believe some of the exercise plans that people set up with themselves. Oh, I got to get a trainer. I got to go five days a week. I got to do upper body and lower body and this and that and yoga and stretching and cardio. They make it so complex that it's not sustainable over time. So keep it really, really simple. And the goal should be uh, working towards 10,000 steps a day. Fantastic book, Eat, Move, Sleep, talks about how important what we eat how much we move, and how our sleep is. We don't even take that in consideration in our day-to-day -day lives. We mostly are sitting for the majority of the day, eating not that healthy foods, and not sleeping right. So that's another thing that we really work on coaching is getting a balance, having a balanced life and giving you the tools and the energy to accomplish what you want. Uh, the, ne the next thing is dieting. I mean, I have, I have clients, some clients, they have this many a stack of diet books and that they're going to read and one day they're going to clean up their diet and one day they're going to lose weight. Keep it simple. Just, it's, it's not that complicated, but if you make something complicated, it's much easier to sell and market to people. But if it's really simple, it's, it's a little bit more difficult because... All you need to do is focus on increasing your vegetables, lean meats, fish, chicken, things like that, and your fruits and some nuts. Stay away from things, as one author um, wrote, stay away from things with labels on it. If it has a label on it, it's probably processed and not healthy for you. And just gradually increase your, your uh, portion sizes. So if you have no vegetable, if you don't eat any vegetables, then you start adding uh, one, one portion size of vegetables, then two portions, then you work it into your lunch, and you work it into your dinner, 
and just that gradual approach. It doesn't need to be complex. Money management, that's another thing. People have all kinds of envelopes and folders and systems. Too difficult, you're not gonna stick with it. One of the great things is that it's so easy now to track your finances online with something that's automatic like Mint or like Level. Those are great programs where you automatically, everything, it pulls in all your information from different, uh, your different banks and your different expenses, credit cards and stuff like that. And it's all automized. Keep it simple. And then you, at the end of the month, you can go through your expenses and get an idea, a rough idea of what you want your budget to be. I really like the system of going, I go through my expenses and label or tag everything that was waste that I regret spending the money on. Really, really simple and easy. Schoolwork. This is another thing. I, I work with um, university students. And one of the mistakes they make is they don't, first of all, they don't map out a plan. They don't say, okay, the test is going to be in two weeks. I have 100 pages to read. I want to read for uh, two days off and do the 10, day, 10 days. Okay, you're going to study. The goal is 10, study for 10, uh, 10 pages per day and make flashcards or notes or, or whatever. But keeping it real simple, we just, oh, I got to study the book. I got to learn all this. And then people overstudy. And then that also creates resistance. Dating. That's another thing that people tend to compliment, complicate. I've got to find the right person. I've got to meet the one. Um, and then they say, oh, I can't find the right person. I can't, I don't know where to find him or I don't want to go online dating and, and all this stuff. Again, too complicated. Release your expectations and just start doing things that you enjoy. Hobbies, taking cooking classes, yoga classes, go on hiking clubs, doing things like meetup and just socialize without all that pressure of, oh, I have to meet the, the right person or I have to meet the one. Just go out and socialize and have fun. Simple. The list can go on. Um, in simplification, uh, when people, people call me and they want to minimize and uh, simplify the things that they, they have, again, they keep it so complicated. Going through stuff, not sure what you're going to get rid of, what you're going to keep. I, I, I encourage them to do the ABC system. So A, you go through your stuff. Well, the first thing you do, before you even get there, keep it simple by just picking the low hanging fruit. There is stuff you could go around your house or apartment through your clothes. And there is stuff that it's just, you don't have to reach up or get a ladder to get the fruit. It's low hanging, it's easy to, to pluck and eat. Get rid of that stuff first. And what if this stuff that you, usually I like the rule of a year. If I haven't used in the year, I'm probably not going to use it and, and just get rid of it. But there's stuff that you're not attached to that can you, you can easily part with. And what's nice is other people can enjoy it. It's sitting collecting dust in your closet in your, your house or apartment. Let other people enjoy it. So picking the low hanging fruit would be the first thing to start. People say, I can't simplify. I'm sure you could go around your house and find 10, 15 things just within within 10, 15 minutes that you don't need and uh, wouldn't be too difficult to get rid of. And then go to ABC. A is stuff that you absolutely don't want to get rid of, you want to keep. And that's, so that's a, you just separate that and you keep, you put that, if you have a box of stuff or a closet stuff, you pull all your stuff out of your closet and then you put all the A's back. That's a done deal. And then you have this, we'll get to the B's. You have the C stuff. C stuff is stuff you, you don't really need, don't really want, and could either donate, sell, or get rid of. And it's not a big deal to get rid of. And then there's the B stuff. Now, this is where it gets a little bit difficult, um, or people can make it a little bit difficult. The B stuff, you're not sure. You might need it. You might not need it. You're not quite sure. The B stuff, you can put in storage, or put in a box, put somewhere, and then see if you need it within the next six months to a year. Um, and that's it. And that's a real quick way to sort and get uh, through your, get rid of your stuff and be and simplify. And it feels so, so good to simplify. So the theme of all of this, when it, when it all comes down to what we want to work on is self-discipline, keeping our word to ourselves, having the discipline to keep things simple, 
And when we make things complex, we don't realize this, but a lot of times what people are doing is they're, it's a form of procrastination. Because if they make it complex enough, they have a reason why they're not going to do it. Oh, I have an excuse. It's too hard. It's too difficult. And it's just a creative form of procrastination. So keeping things simple. And what you want to focus on is consistency. That's what makes the difference is day to day. Are you doing the things that you need to do consistently? That trumps any type of hot streaks that you might have or putting a lot of effort or force into things. We just make life too hard for ourselves. Hopefully those tips have uh, helped you and you know take one or two of them and start applying them and if you want support and a, a, your own personal coach uh, send me an email and thank you again for all your support and comments and i'll see you next time bye bye